Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and today is going to be a tutorial on how to use fog. There are two types of fog in Arnold that I want to go over today and that is environment fog and also fog that's interacted by lights. So this is the scene that I'm going to be using. It's supposed to be an underwater scene. That's supposed to be water. This is supposed to be underwater and there's a bunch of cool stuff going on over here. Um, you can download this. Whoopsie. Uh, you can download this. It's actually a free model that you can download in the lighting challenge. So if you look up lighting challenge, I need to get out of that. There we go. Magical cue. Um, the, if you go to the lighting challenge, you'll be able to download this, uh, there. So, um, I'll make it convenient for you as well. And you can go to academicphoenixplus.com and download it. Um, it will have other files in there, such as caustics and stuff for a future tutorial. But in this case, you can just download it either or, but I just wanted to give credit to the, uh, where I found this piece. So if I render right now, there's only one light. And if I render, you're going to notice that everything is a Lambert. So there's nothing really special going on right now. All right. Um, so Arnold, if we go to our render settings, fog is actually found in our render settings. So over here in the render settings, go to Arnold and there's this thing called environment. Now there is a background legacy. This just, legacy usually means that it's eventually going to be removed uh, just in case you're kind of stuck with the old ways. But the new one for Arnold and for Maya is atmosphere. When I click on this little checker, you're going to see two options. We have atmosphere volume and then create AI fog. I'm going to clip, click on create AI fog. So not much looks like it happened, but if I click on this little output connection right here and open up the attributes, open up the, there we go, control A, open up the attributes. You're going to see that we have this, um, these attributes for fog. I'm going to minimize this and let's see what we currently have. So right away we can see that we have some nice fog going on. Um, it's coming from the further away the environment is, the more fog there is. The closer it is to the camera, the less fog we'll see, which is kind of how fog works. And this is ideal for underwater because on underwater, there's so many particles in the water that eventually just kind of fades away. Or if this was, let's pretend that there was no water, this is outside. This is something that you could do with haze or pollution or whatever you, you want. So let's take a look at the attributes. The first one you'll notice is color. We can change the color. So now we are in a crazy environment. If I want to make it look like the world is polluted and uh, there's some sort of barrel down here that's polluting this environment, there you go. Or maybe this is an alien landscape. That was another one you could work with. Um, red, there's blood in the water. Not good. Lots of it, it seems. So, um, so there's a lot you can already do with very little. Just by changing the fog color, you can really give it a, a particular type of mood. I'm going to go back to white. And um, I kind of actually, I'm going to go to a little blue. Just whoops, that's too much blue. Let's go lighter. Let's turn it purple. Oh, well, maybe I'll just go back to white. I'm going back to white. Okay, so distance, as you can imagine, means um, the, and this is very kind of sensitive value here. But if I change it to 0 0.2, for example, you'll see that the fog's a lot closer. If I change it to 1, it gets even closer still. And if I change it to, let's say 10, now I'm really in a foggy space. Uh, so basically, as you can under hopefully notice, is that fog, the distance is how close is the fog is to the camera. So let's go back to 0.2. I don't know, let's go to one. Ah, that might be too much, let's go 0.5. Okay, cool. Um, height. So the way fog works is almost like a box around your environment. So if there was a height, it would rise up and down depending on the, uh, um, the environment. So let's say, for example, I change this to a one and, uh, you can notice that even though the distance is still really close, but the height of the fog is getting really close to the, where the beginning is or where the fog is. So let's do something dramatic and do five, right? And if we reduce the height to 0.3, you can see the type of effect that it's having. So you'll note, you'll start noticing that it's, that the fog starts to fade away, except for up here and down there. So it's all about the height. All right, going back to one. The ground normal is zero, zero, one. So usually when you see three boxes, they represent X, Y, and Z. So Z makes sense for our environment because R, Z is, uh, we want fog coming from distance towards us. If I wanted to change this, to a negative one, the fog's actually from the camera to the distance and therefore we can't see anything. So that's not really going to help us there. 
Um, let's say though that I wanted it to rise or fall. So I can do uh, ground normal to zero, one, zero. And now we have a different type of fog. We now have fog rising from the bottom and fading as we go up. This gives it a very um, murky kind of feel. So maybe I'll drop it to 0.3 and you can see the height is really condensed now. It's clear at the top and it's getting really condensed on the bottom. If I keep going down, eventually it just kind of fades away to zero. Oop, don't do zero. So let's say I want to keep it to, let's say 0.3, something a little bit more like misty. So if this was tombstones or anything like that, you can get something really interesting to look at. Um, again, distance up impacts it as well. You can do one, five. You can see that it's, uh, it's being controlled by both the distance as well as the height. All right, if you want to do something else and change the ground normal to one, zero, zero, this is really shows you where the fog is located. It is right at the one mark and it's all going to the left, which is actually something that you might want to consider animating, for example. So if you wanted to slowly animate, so if you want the fog to become stronger and stronger, you can actually animate this. So there's a lot of really cute things, really cool things you can do with this. Let me change this height back to 0.7 and let me go to zero, one, zero. So it's much more noticeable. All right, cool. All right, so the ground point is where exactly do you want the fog? Sometimes, um, in, depending on where your environment is, you can actually go and put the fog right where it starts and then up, right? So that's something that you want to avoid. So sometimes you have to put in a negative value to make sure that the point system is actually below. So it's, um, it's something that you're going to have to play with a little bit. So um, if I do a negative one, notice that it's still, you can see it, but if I go anything further than like a negative three, for example, the fog starts to disappear. That's because the ground point is going lower and lower and the fog, because of my height and my distance, it's getting stopped. So I'm going to just go ahead and put it at zero, 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 but at least you understand hopefully how this works. So again, we have color, the distance, the height, and all this is impacted by the, where the normal is x y or z and where the point is so where the fog is going to start and end all right so notice though that it doesn't really get impacted by light which means that if i have god rays let me take a look at my outliner windows outliner oh boy everything is out in the open great uh water surface good let's make sure that one's noticeable so if I wanted to do, let's say, God rays, it's going to be really hard. So for example, if light was coming from above and hitting these planks of wood, you should be able to see what um, light rays. Um, I personally like to call them God rays just because every time you see anything mystical and or, or amazing, there's always like lights streaming from the heavens. It looks like God rays. So, And I think when I describe it as God rays, people know exactly what I'm talking about. So we're talking about just sunbeams, but you know, uh, awesome God rays as well. So in this case, you'll notice that I'm getting shadows and all this information, but the, but the, it's not getting impacted by fog, by the fog. So that means that we have to use something else. So let's go to our render settings. And this time we're going to click on this guy. And this time we're going to create atmosphere volume. Right away, you're going to notice that our scene turns dark. Notice also over here to the right, we have a new attribute. If you ever need access to these attributes, you can always go through the hypershade, but the fastest way is render settings and just go and click on here. That will get you to the output. So right off the bat, you're going to think that it's not working and it's not because our density of our fog is zero. So we're going to increase this a little bit. And as the more we increase, the more fog we're going to get. So the issue with our light is that it can't work with a directional light. Remember that a directional light starts from infinity and goes all the way through. So it's very hard to create fog when you have a light that literally illuminates from everywhere. So I know it's just one direction, which is great, but the problem is, is that fog can't illuminate the whole environment to try to get these type of sh shadows for infinity. So what instead we're going to use is, and I'm going to keep this as a base, I'm going to use a spotlight. So let's go to create light spotlight. And then I'm going to look through it and just kind of place it in my environment so I can see it. Maybe illuminate something over here. Wow. Right click object mode. Let's go back to our perspective. 
close this. Oop. Press play. And now you can see this tiny little beam of light. It's a little bit of a shadow. That is our spotlight illuminating light. I'm going to grab this again and I'm going to look through it. And I'm going to make it look like it's casting lights inside this environment. So maybe something like this. Now we start losing it because our light is really not that intense. This is a spotlight, so we might we need to increase our 10. You're starting to see how it's starting to get up there. I'm going to go to my Arnold attributes and increase my exposure, maybe twice as much, or it's actually exponentially twice as much. There you go. I'm starting to see something, maybe a 4. Ooh, I'm getting some nice beams here. Um, let me rotate this a little bit more, try to capture a little bit more of that cool-looking lighting. Let's try that. Maybe something a little bit more dramatic. Okay, let's go a different direction. So here we have some nice holy lights, and it's kind of pointing to this direction. It's kind of pointing towards, kind of divides it in half, which is kind of nicer cinematography-wise. It's got hard shadows and stuff, but um, you kind of get the idea. So I'm going to go to my light again, and I'm um, just going to, you can, of course, change the color. So maybe I want a little, depending what type of, fog you want about pink everybody something's happening aliens are coming um let's get some actually let me do color temperature it might be easy maybe get some more appealing colors you can go a little cooler if you want to anyway so there's a lot of things you can do Ugh, this color is hideous okay so now that we have some fog you can make it more intense by increasing the intensity or exposure it's really up to you and Basically, that's how you get fog. So I'm going to scroll down, though, and go a little bit over how to fix some of the rendering. Once you start adding fog, it really starts getting noisy, and the rendering starts to increase the time, um, as you can see here that it's really chugging along. Um, so that's where the uh, cast of volumetric shadows is going to come in. Um, in previous tutorials, I kind of skipped over it because we really didn't have fog, but this is where volumetric shadows come in. So volumetric shadows is this area right here where it's being affected by a volume and uh, we're getting some really interesting noise. So we need to increase our samples. So again, you have to be careful though because the more you increase the samples, the higher the quality, but the longer the render. Of course, you want nice quality render, so you need to you know, give yourself some time to render. Other things we can do is increase our samples of our uh, shadows. So I'm going to crank that up as well. And then in my render settings, um, you're going to notice that we do have volume. So it's important that we increase that as well. And of course, it should be with this as well. That's probably a little too much. but um, And then that way, you can start getting some really nice lighting. So. Uh, you can see that the fog is getting clearer and it's looking pretty nice. So that is a quick tutorial on how to create fog, two types of fog, atmospheric, whoops, atmospheric fog and of course AI fog. Hopefully that was uh, helpful and fog is very powerful. It will always make your stuff look really cool. Let me know if you have any questions. Of course, I'm always interested in your suggestions and your comments. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more of these type of tutorials. Visit me at academicphoenixplus.com. You can send me a message there as well. If, and, um, and you can also be part of my newsletter and all sorts of information that I have for you. And models too, free models. Um, thank you, everybody, and I will see you next time.